Welcome back to Understanding Human Anatomy and our discussion of the peritoneal cavity. In this seventh video, I want to draw a cross section through the embryo, this time at the location of the epiploic foramen, which is the hole through which the greater and lesser sacs communicate. So again, let me start by drawing in the body wall. And the vertebra. We'll draw in an aorta and also a vena cava just to the right of the aorta. Our kidneys will still be in the diagram, so I'll put a kidney in on each side. And color those in. Now I'm going to put the stomach in here. And the stomach is narrowed down somewhat. It's this would be at the pyloric region of the stomach as it's getting ready to um, open into the duodenum. And we'll put the spleen over here. And then the liver be in this position, color it in, and let's add some labels at this point. So the kidney, the spleen, The stomach, I will just use capital ST for stomach, and then the liver. Let me sketch in the peritoneum. So I'll start on the dorsal body wall, like so. Come over to the region of the kidney. Then we'll have part of the splenal renal ligament. And around the spleen with uh, visceral peritoneum. Then over to the stomach with part of the gastrosplenic ligament. Then around the stomach, and I'm going to make a bulge here quite deliberately. Come back around 
the gastrosplenic ligament, visceral peritoneum of the spleen, spleno-renal ligament, and we'll come around the body. Have the falciform ligament. the false form and then around the body. And again I'm going to color in the lesser sac like so. Putting in some labels we have the falciform ligament, right here. We have the splenal renal ligament. Remember one of the structures that developed from the dorsal mesogastrum. The other structure that develops from the partitioning of the dorsal mesogastrum is between the spleen and stomach and that is the gastrosplenic ligament. right there. And we have a piece of the lesser omentum. I'll draw a label to it. And it doesn't quite make it all the way over to the liver at this level. So it's this tissue that's sticking out right here. And you notice there's a gap between the end of the lesser omentum and the liver. That gap is the epiploic foramen. Let me draw a line going through it. like so. So I put a double-headed arrow indicating it's a passageway. And this is the epiploic foramen.
which is the communication between the greater and lesser sacs. Right here. Now, it's a relatively small passageway. It's about the thickness of your index finger. And, and one of the best ways to experience it when dissecting a cadaver is to actually stick a finger in to the lesser sac through the epiploic foramen before you remove the digestive tract. Once you've cut the falciform ligament and the gastro and the spleno-renal ligaments and everything that holds the digestive tract to the posterior wall, you really miss what the lesser sac is. And if you don't know where the lesser sac is, it's virtually impossible to, to figure out the epiploic foramen. But it's important because then fluid can move from the omental bursa to the greater sac and vice versa. And as we're talking, let me put a label in here. So we remember that this is the omental bursa or lesser peritoneal sac. And, and the omental bursa actually extends inferior to this level, um, inferior to the epiploic foramen, and we'll see that in the next diagram that I do. Um, it's possible for someone to get an infection in the omental bursa and that infection not leak out into the greater sac because the greater omentum can move in and plug up the epiploic foramen and prevent the infectious material from moving from the omental bursa into the greater sac. Now, in this little hunk of lesser omentum that I've left here, we have some structures uh, that we need to, to talk about. We have the hepatic artery. We also have the portal vein. And we have the common bile duct. Now, these three structures together form the portal triad. And the portal triad, again, consists of the hepatic artery, the artery coming, uh, actually it's a branch of the uh, celiac trunk that supplies the liver with oxygenated blood. We have the portal vein, which is bringing venous blood, deoxygenated blood, from the digestive tract to the liver so that the nutrients that are absorbed by the digestive tract go to the liver first. Also, any 
noxious elements, poisonous elements, would go through the liver first to be detoxified. And then the common bile duct which is the structure carrying bile from the liver to the duodenum. So let me put in some lines here. Common bile duct, portal vein, hepatic artery. Now this arrangement of these three structures lying together is carried out throughout the liver. Uh, the artery is going to branch, so is the portal vein. The common bile duct will have tributaries and they will follow each other through the liver so that when you look at the liver microscopically, you look at it in the microscope, one of the key features you will see besides the liver cells, besides the hepatocytes, is the portal triad. Then it would be a branch of the hepatic artery, a branch of the portal vein, and a tributary of the common bile duct. So, this is a section through the epiploic foramen the communication point between the omental bursa, the lesser sac, and the greater sac. In the next video, we'll take a look at two more cross sections of the embryo, one just below the epiploic foramen, just inferior to the epiploic foramen, where we still have a bit of omental bursa visible and then we'll take a cross-section much lower in the embryo, well inferior to the omental bursa. Thank you for your attention.